I shall be very happy to answer any questions on the presentation. Yes. I have a thousand in hand. I love what you said at the end there. Yes. Where does the soul begin and where does the attack of matter begin for that soul? The soul can't begin because beginning is in time. When you say where does it begin, we have come down to the last track was already. Soul we have left behind. Soul we have left above. Soul does not live in time. Where soul resides, there is no beginning, no middle and no end. So when you say where does soul begin, the question is a mental question. The mind cannot conceive of something that has no beginning. The soul is where there is no beginning. If I made three statements and they were equally true, then you will understand where the soul is. If I say soul began long ago, or I say soul begins today, or I say soul will begin in the future, and all three mean the same thing, then you have understood where the soul is. But it doesn't make sense. Because the mind likes to think of everything in time. Soul is about time. Soul, soul is about beginnings, middles and ends. So if you have a beginning, you are already into the mind. How can you ask, where does the timelessness begin? It wouldn't be timeless anymore. Soul is timeless, therefore it can have no beginning. It's always there, forever. There is no time for it to begin. Soul never began, will never end. There is no lifespan. But the mind, the astral body, the causal body, these have got beginning. Middle and end. <laughs> sure, go ahead. Uh, where is soul? They have fallen down. They picked up in time from the Akashic record. Why? To have experience. So every soul has to pick up or set up Akashic record on. That's right. And before that soul picked up. There was no before. <laughs> <laughs> if we have it before, then we have already picked up the Akashic record. Only when the Akashic records are picked up, before and after and then and when's come. Yes. And what does it mean when somebody says somebody is an old soul? That means cross the stage. Oh, that's referring to soul music out here, right? <laughs> sometimes, they, sometimes they bring out the soul right down, including the soul of the shoe. <laughs> so that's not the soul I'm speaking <laughs> But that is a way of describing our own spiritual qualities. When we talk of the soul, we talk of that unlimited, unending, timeless consciousness. Then we talk of total soul. Totality of souls, we talk of the creator of all souls, for all individual experiences. But even experiences which look individual, even they are only one and total. But in illusion they look individual and separated. We were never separated. We are not in reality ever separated. Only it looks like we are separated. And therefore we have experiences in illusions altogether. Which are separated. It is like a person going to sleep in a dream. You go to sleep and have a dream. In the dream you will meet thousand people. You may create as many as you like. They all look different. They talk different. They fight with you. They love you. They hate you. They have all kinds of relationships. When you wake up, you find they were all the creators of the same mind. It's there. It doesn't mean all those people have to dream together, create a dream. In fact, you can't have a number of people dreaming together to go into one dream. They can't. In any dream, even a dream consisting of a 10,000 people or a million people or 3 billion people, there is only one dreamer. Therefore, in this creation, in illusion of time, it may look like we are so many. There is only one creator. There is only one consciousness. In the dream, there may be a thousand people talking differently, thinking differently, doing different things. They draw their thinking, talking, doing, experience, movement from one consciousness that of the dreamer. All levels of experience and creation are created from one consciousness, one dream, one creator. It has never been split, except in the illusion of the dream. This is like a big dream. Yes. In correlation to what you're saying, in the chakras, at the end of the chakras, do we start over again? In the continuous cycle of existence? Do we find like to uh, Jesus Christ? being of a high level of consciousness, or Lao Tzu, 
high level of consciousness, that state of transcendental soul, or they maintain that oneness with God is the God or when they cross the mind and say love, they maintain their continuity, continuum in the Lord forever. But when they reach only high levels in the realm of time to chakras, they go in sight of the energy. Is true wisdom how is one capable to identify true wisdom? Is it something that is just feeling? Or it seems like it would be impossible to express in words the feeling of, of knowing that level of wisdom. The best the word I know for true wisdom is to do much better than feeling. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes. The honest is provided. Is there energy? We don't call it energy. Just call it existence. Call it consciousness. Yes. Yes. What is what is the relationship between uh, the Akashic Records and Grand Dissolution? How are they related? The Grand Dissolution is all with the Akashic Records. And they recreated again. Yeah, recreated. I mean, fresh things. It's one creation that holds one package of Akashic Records and Grand Dissolution that package finishes the new one. Yes. They are part of the Akashic Records. Not different ones. Ours are controlling them. Akashic records are not for this earth plane only. For all creation, in all the galaxies, in all the universes, there are only one set of Akashic records. We can go from one planet to another. We don't the same Akashic records. We can have a birth in one planet and have a second birth in another planet within the system. Not necessary to stick to earth. No. The normal system is we rotate in the same areas where we create the, our Karma. If you have too much uh, attachment and desire out here on earth, you stay around in the earth. If you have too much attachment and desire in twin cities, you'll probably rotate in twin cities. You might even go out from here. But if you begin to have less and less of this and have some other value desires, desires of value systems, you will move to another planet. Yes. Yes, you know. With you know. mm-hmm. higher awareness, you become happier. It is lack of awareness which makes us unhappy. Yeah. They are pretty unhappy. Have you seen the rich people that are happy? Oh, yeah, I know that. So have no it's nothing to do with the happiness and unhappiness. I conducted a study on this. I went to school at Harvard. And one of the courses I took was uh, how to make people, how to motivate people to do things. Mm-hmm. And I decided to take up an interesting project to study. Is there something people would like to do without being given a reward, a monetary reward or a wage. People all work for money. And I took this country and a sample of 1,000 persons from the Boston area in this country to study what kind of thing a man or a woman or a person will do without reward. So I just took the telephone book and wrote it down 1,000 names and went over to them. Most of them responded. Very fortunate. And I asked them, would you like to do something for which no reward is given to you? Yes, we would. What kind of act? They said, for instance, a child is crossing a street and we find it's not able to do it on its own. So we help the child to cross the street and no expect a reward. The person is drowning, and we'll try and save the person without expecting a reward. And so on. They listed up some of the actions which they will do without reward. So I said, what for will you do this? Then you don't get a reward. They said for the sake of happiness. I said, fine, that's what I was looking for. A definition of happiness. Then I asked the same sample, 1,000 people, to tell me what makes for happiness. What makes you happy? List out the points that make you happy. And they said, we are happy if we have a lot of money. Hmm? We are happy if we got a good home. We are happy if we got a good wife or husband who doesn't desert us. We are happy if the kids are nice and they don't Turn out fluent and naughty. We are happy if we are in good health. They listed five, six points. Almost all of them said the same thing. These things make us happy. I had also put a counter question. What makes you unhappy? And they said if we have no money, we have no <laughs> and if we have a poor home, and if we have the kids run away, and if the uh, husband and wife uh, tend to threaten to divorce, or mistreats or beats, and so on. They gave the opposite. Or if you are in sick health, will be unhappy. Then I asked some of them, about a hundred of them, are you happy or unhappy? Those who said, we are happy, did not have money, 
did not have a good home, did not have any other thing they claim to make for happiness. <laughs> they also said we are very unhappy. Had all the money, good home, fight, everything. <laughs> then I, I realized that they were giving wrong answers themselves. This was not what was making them happy or unhappy. And then I proceeded further to study this. But all I am saying is it was a startling discovery that these so-called material goods have not made people happy. And considerable unhappiness in spite of these. A happy person is happy with anything, with everything. Yes. Yes, no, it is no. possible. Nothing makes people more happy than the experience of love. If it is love, they will accept it. If it is charity, they will not. If you have I, an ego with you, I want to love him, they will not. If you forget the I and be with them, they will accept it. Nobody ever, ever rejects love. It's our natural state. It is our nature to accept love. It is our nature to extend love. It's only the thinking mind that comes in the way. Oh, you don't have to go out of the way to love. If you keep the mind aside, that is automatic. How does one express love? Any way you like. There is no limitation. Once you start thinking, am I expressing love in the right way or wrong way? You are not in love. You have enough time to think, then you are not in love. When you are in love, a natural expression will come at that time naturally. It makes no difference. You can express love in any way. Depending on where you are, what you are, what the circumstances are, you will naturally express love. Love is experience of oneness. You will express oneness by a look you can express, by a word, by any other means. Yes. Yes, I was saying that the experience of so-called free will is only the physical plane. And again, that made us a seeker. Therefore, it made us a lover. Yes. Pure consciousness uncluttered by mind. Any other question? Yes. No. It need not be written because we are going to love anyway, whether the Kashi record say or not. We are love. Why should we have it written down? We are conscious beings. Why should it be written down? We are thoughts of God. Why should it be written down? What is written in the Akashic records is what we will do after we forget about love and get into the mind. Love is there all the time. That's our reality. Our real nature, our real self, our real soul is love. Love does not have to be written down. You don't have to go to love. Love is there. If you stop going anywhere else, you will be loved. Love does not require you to find some something. Stop thinking, stop the mind, keep the mind away, you are love. Automatically, that's your real nature. That's your real you. So love is not to be written down anywhere. Love is beyond the Akashic records. It goes on. Akashic records only write what is below that. Love is beyond, above. Yes. Correct. The more you use analysis, the more further away you move from love, the more you use synthesis, togetherness, the more you move towards love. Yes? Mind is very, very useful thing, please don't give it up altogether. <laughs> but use it. Use the mind, don't let the mind use you. That's all I'm saying. Use the mind. Let love use the mind. If you love someone, use the mind how to go there, how to reach there, how to be there. Use the mind. But don't use the mind to decide whether you love or not. You fail. Use the mind for getting things through. Use the mind for carrying out your intuitive decisions. Use the mind to live in experience what your intuition tells you. But don't let the mind start using you. That's what I'm saying. You know Aladdin's story? Yeah. Those who haven't heard the story of Aladdin and the genie, please raise your hands. Aladdin was a young boy who found a lamp. And when he rubbed that lamp, a genie, huge big genie appeared. And the genie said, I am your slave. Command what I shall do for you. And the little boy was frightened by seeing such a big slave, big genie coming out to help him. He said, oh, you just go away from here. Just go and do something outside. Go and build a house, a big house outside, then come back. The genie went out and after a few minutes came back. He was so fast. He said, I have built the house. Command what I shall do. So Aladdin again said, go outside, there's a big river, go and build a big bridge over it, then come back, don't come before that. Aladdin went and in a few minutes he was back. He was so fast, he could do things in minutes. 
And he came back, he said, the bridge is ready, command what I shall do. Pretty soon, Aladdin was out of command. He had no more commands to do. He said, all right, do what you like. And then the genie said, all right, I would like to go somewhere there. Come along with me. So Aladdin followed the genie. After a while, instead of Aladdin being the master and genie being the slave, genie became the master giving commands and Aladdin began to follow him, became the slave and became very unhappy. In the story, of course, you are following that genie is the mind which can do things so fast and we are Aladdin. And one day Aladdin was feeling so sad what has happened to him. A friend came along and said, Aladdin, how come you look so sad? He said, I have found a strange genie. He claims to be my slave, but actually he is my master. Whatever he says, I keep on doing. <laughs> so he said, that's no problem. I'll tell you a way out. In this story, this friend, Aladdin is the spiritual, physical, uh, spiritual master in physical form who has come to help him. In this story. Because you know these uh, masters come and when they find the mind is troubling us too much, they tell us, take a mantra, take some holy words and repeat them to control your thought, to control your mind. Story is based upon that. So Aladdin said, I can't do a thing, this uh, genie is taking me around. And that friend said, all right, next time the genie says, command what I shall do, tell him, bring a pole, wooden pole from outside and take it in the center of this room. So then he brings the pole and sets it up and says, command what I shall do. Say, genie, now go up and down this pole, up and down this pole. Say, I give you the next command. So genie will be up and down on the pole. And then you want to use him? Tell him. Now I command you do this work. Then he has done the work and comes back and says, what next? Say, up, up and down this pole. So they say, this mind is like a genie. It keeps learning and has taken control of us. Instead of us using the mind, the mind is using us. The mind is drawing us where it likes. So the best way is that when the mind is to be used, use it. When you don't want to use it, put it on the repetition of words up and down, up and down here in the head. When you want to use it, use the mind. And bring it back. When you don't want to use it, put it back on the phone up and down. Say no other questions and thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you.